And uh, okay, we were being <laughs> and, it's, and it's so nice to see, see so, oh, so many people. Um, so I'll, uh, if everyone would like to rise uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, led by Grace Vaughn. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Did I surprise you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, public comment. Uh, we have um, one public comment, and just before we uh, uh, read this into the record, uh, this will be the last time uh, we will be doing public comments this way uh, for our June 21st meeting and continuing on. Uh, we will be having uh, any member of the public who wants to come and address the board directly will be able to do so. If we have too many, if there are many people, we can't fit everybody in the room, uh, we'll stage it and have people come in um, in, a, in an order, but um, that's kind of, the, that's the game plan. So this is the last time that we'll be, uh, be uh, only accepting uh, written in uh, uh, public comment. So Jamie's been gracious enough to, to read the uh, public comment, so. Dear Mr. Newton and members of the board, we at SCORE, Southeastern Connecticut Organization for Racial Equity, were disheartened to learn of the events that took place on Wednesday, May 26, 2021 at East Lime High School in which a student wrote the N-word on the car of a student of color. In response, the school took measures to identify the student who carried out this act, involved the police, and charged the student with a hate crime. Inevitably, just as some have responded to the school commissioning and equity audit, there will certainly be those who vocalize their disagreement to the district's response. But let's be clear, this was hate speech. What is hate speech? Hate speech is not just an insensitive comment or hurt feelings. Hate speech is defined as speech that expresses or incites hatred toward people on the basis of some aspect of their identity. It affects identity, changes how a student sees themselves, changes their beliefs and who they are, the effects are not just a fear of physical safety in the moment, but can have long lasting psychological effects as well. Not just for the student who was targeted, but for every student of color in the district. There is evidence that hate speech predicts violence, that groups more exposed to hate speech are more likely to commit suicide, and it causes what scientists call a dehumanization effect, which makes it easier for us to justify suffering and harm caused to another human being. This is serious. We understand that the student carrying out the act was disciplined, but as we learned from the mock hanging incident that occurred in 2016, these incidents affect the entire student body. What will be done to support students of color who are not directly targeted, but certainly feel the effects of this hatred within their school? We recommend restorative practices as an avenue for healing and restoring community. Restorative practice is a framework for building, maintaining, and strengthening relationships and responding to conflict through authentic conversations. It facilitates a shared understanding of what happened and how things can be made right. In addition, we recommend the following 44 page document, a publication by Teaching Tolerance as a guide for administrators, counselors, and teachers. It provides several specific measures in responding to hate and bias at school. There is a link. We are here to support you as you navigate through this difficult time. Sincerely, Nikki Padilla, Director of Programming, Ben Ostrowski, Executive Director, Annalise Lapidus, Director of Community Engagement, Serena Valentine, Director of Operations, Esteban Garcia, Director of Finance, 58 Pennsylvania Avenue, Suite 2, Unit 5, Niantic. Okay, okay good. Thanks, Jamie. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, move on to our next thing. Uh, we have uh, recognition of our of the district uh, retirees. Um, we do for this year. Yes, so, um, we uh, have five of them who uh, had joined us uh, this evening. You know, we went back and forth on uh, whether or not you know, we could try and maybe have a, uh, a retirement party, get back to it. Long story short, you know, we talked with our retirees, um, got some feedback from all of them. We decided to uh, to hold off. We're going to do that next year. Obviously, we'll invite them. Um, when we can all be uh, back to normal and uh, we'll be back at the Port and Starboard or you know the usual spot where we, we've had in the fish market or the fish market, we've had it there as well. But um, we have uh, some of them with us tonight and uh, we want to recognize them. Um, they're on our Zoom call. Mm -hmm. uh, there's five of them. Uh, Nan Rigdon, 
Steve Give us Kirsch. a wave, Nan. There's Steve Nan. <laughs> Steve Kirsch. Steve's out there. Yep. Hey, Steve. <laughs> Jen Frost, who's retiring from our yep, med school, is. the assistant principal. Uh, Terry Glenn. Hello. Terry. And uh, Sandy <laughs> Robitaille. Sandy, you're there as well, right? There you are. Excellent. Listen, I, I have a proclamation uh, that I'd like to read, but before, and it comes from the town, each one of you is going to receive that proclamation. But before I read that, I just want to take a minute on behalf of uh, administration and the district uh, and just say a true thank you, you know, to all of you for your work, for your efforts, um, you know, all, all the time you spent, you know, with, uh, with the children here in East Lyme, with the staff members and the adults uh, here in East Lyme. Uh, our family is going to miss you. Um, you know, we've so enjoyed the interactions. I know I have with, with each and every one of you. And uh, we just, we wish you all the best and uh, um, stay in touch. Maybe you'll come back and want to uh, sub for us as well. We always like that. So keep, keep, us, uh, keep us in mind. And uh, let me read this proclamation. Um, and it's to each of you. So it's, it's an individual uh, with your names in it, but I'm going to just change the name to say uh, our retiree or retiree. Uh, and again, this is from our first selectman, Mark Nickerson from the town, whereas uh, our retiree has given selflessly of his, her time and given countless hours in service to the students, to the community through their work as a physical therapist. Well, Sandy, this is yours as a physical therapist for the district. Uh, and whereas um, our retiree has performed with dedication and distinction in the East Lyme school system for the number of years that you've been with us. Whereas uh, you've also, the retiree has also displayed an earnest spirit of teamwork, conscientiousness, and pride in their work and is well liked and respected among staff and the public and has dedicated their professional life to being there for kids. Now, therefore, I, Mark C. Nickerson, first selectman of the town of East Lyme, acknowledge with sincere appreciation our retiree for their spirit of caring and giving, their graciousness, and their dedication. Given under my hand in the seal of the town of East Lyme, Connecticut, the seventh day of June, 2021, and the one hundred and 82nd year of the town. Wow. I didn't know our town was that old. So that's neat. Yeah, excellent. So congratulations you know, to each of you. Um, would any of you just like to say a word or two briefly? I'll, I'll... Go ahead, Terry. There we go. Wait, who did you say? <laughs> Terry, go ahead. You can Maybe, go first. Okay, so I'll... I was just thinking about how I can't even believe that um, I've taught this long, 37 and a half years, right? And I, he, I have always told my own children that as long as you love what you do and you love the people that you do it with, it goes by in a blink of an eye. And I can honestly tell you, it has flown. Um, and you know, forever, I have always been thankful to work for the Board of Ed and so proud to say that I work for East Lyme. Um, so for that, I just want to thank you. Thanks, Terry. Thank Very you. good. <laughs> I, I think, Steve, I think I saw your hand and then Nan. So we'll go to you first, Steve, and then Nan. Um, so I haven't taught as long as many people that retire. I started teaching at age 40, and I'm in my 60s now, but um, I was able to retire, and I took it and... Uh, probably a good thing I did because I ended up getting hit by a car and I'm nursing a spinal cord injury right now. So yeah. just trying to get better. But, uh, you know, when I look back at my teaching career, I think the thing I value the most is the uh, relationships with my co colleagues, you know, teaching elementary school is one of the most demanding thing you could possibly imagine. And, you know, through all that, all the demands of it, become really close and learn to really lean on your colleagues and um, you know a few of the people uh, administrators that molded me too were uh, you know Lucy Schumann who hired me and um, Terry Hurlbert who was a former math coordinator and, and really Linda Nanya who was just wonderful so I really uh, th those are the things I'll look back on and the memories that I'll and the relationships that I'll, I'll cherish thanks very good. Very nice. Steve, you look like you're doing well. Very well. Thanks. Noah, uh, that was a, a horrific accident, and we hope you're, you're faring much better, and it's good to see you. 
We miss you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Nan. 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 Hey, Nan. Hey there. Um, I decided that in honor of teaching in middle school, the second week after my retirement, I would get braces. So <laughs> I still haven't left you guys. And, you know, I had them in high school, but I screwed up. So I'm back here again. And I'm thinking of them all <laughs> with much more sympathy with all this. But um, I first came to East Lyme Middle School in 1999 after teaching 16 years in Norwich pre-K through six and middle school choir. And I mean, I was just struck by coming to this wonderful school, which when we went to the new building, we had an entire music wing and all these people to work with and a wonderful life arts team, which I'd never had before. So I was just in seventh heaven and um, one of the experiences I had that really was formative for me was at the old middle school, now Lily B. I developed an allergic reaction to my room and I had to travel for at least half the year on a cart and pushing my piano through the halls. And the thing that I learned out of that is we're not an island. I got to know several other people while I was doing that and appreciated them. And then when we had faculty meetings, I tried to sit with someone new each time because I just didn't wanna be isolated. And so that was really, really a wonderful thing to get in touch with them. Um, and it was interesting when, when I was interviewed by Jerry Belair, um, he asked me, what was my vision? And uh, how long did I intend to stay? <laughs> And my most exciting vision for coming to the middle school level was directing musicals. And the very next year I started and I didn't stop until a couple years ago. And in the beginning I was cautioned, you know, this isn't Broadway. <laughs> and I was like, I know it's not Broadway, but that doesn't mean I can't give my students a really top notch theatrical experience. And I feel like they got to know their characters and they got to know themselves at a very deep level. And I'm hoping that they carry it through with them. Um, I also, you know, directed my choirs and did honor choirs and created a special treble choir for the, um, for the music educators in the, in the state. And now I've, I've got to figure out who I am again. Um, I tell you, February was hard. I didn't know who I was. I did. I thought I'd be doing my happy dance and I cried <laughs> because that's how much I, I love teaching, just like Terry said. And when I was going through the music files of all my songs and I was creating what you call a tickler file for the new person so they didn't have to go through all the file cabinets, they could just see all the pieces. I just cried because there's so many memories and not sad memories. These were happy tears. And so that has guided me into my next career to work with people with dementia. My mother had dementia and um, I did a lot of research and music and memory are completely connected. And mm -hmm. when someone has dementia, if you play them a soundtrack of their lives, they come back to life. And I, I challenge all of you to think about all the times when you hear a song that takes you back and you are instantly transported back in time and, and hopefully happy memories. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have for the middle school and that's what I hope to spread. And, and I hope that all my students can look back and say, oh, I remember when we did that, that was so awesome. So I just wanted to thank everybody for, for encouraging the arts for telling us that we're important and that we are really not just a special area. We are crucial to the development of these kids. And I know I'm preaching to the choir, but <laughs> I just wanna thank you so much for everything you've done and the past people have done and the present and um, rah, rah, sis, boom, bah, love Elms. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.
you uh, you built a robust uh, music program at the middle school, Nan, and uh, you know the the drama program as well. And uh, you know we we've got a lot of uh, good things to continue uh, because of your work. So thank you very much. Would uh, meet us, Sandy or uh, Jen? Jen say a word or two. Sandy, you want to say a word? Sure. Can yes. We can hear you. All, Go ahead. All all the Zoom meetings I've been to this year and this particular one, my internet is in, unstable. So if I go in and out, but I just wanna say as a physical therapist, it's been a privilege, just a privilege to work in a school district. I mean, it, this is a profession that crosses, it's et medically based and there's a piece that's educationally based and we've all over the years um, watched that role grow and expand and just really feel a part of um, students with special needs, providing some service to the students, to the staff, and watching them grow. Um, I've been in the district so long that uh, the preschool has been in every elementary building over the years. Um, and I've just I've had the chance to be in every one of the schools. And um, that's been a challenge at times and also just a delight to see when I am in the preschool and then they move up to an elementary, I always can say, Oh, I'll see you, whichever one it is. I will see you on day one. And um, that's been the comforting. And then I've been here long enough to see um, students move all the way through and graduate. And it's just been very rewarding. And this district is just amazing, hands down, the best one to be at. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you, Thank you very much. Especially your smile. You always have a smile on your face whenever we see you in the hallway. So keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jenna, a few last words. Yes, I, I really would like to thank the board for the opportunity to administrate in East Slime. It's been um, really a fantastic experience. People may not know this, but Jeff Newton was actually a mentor to me when I was getting my administrator certificate. So Jeff, I thank you for that mentorship. And then of course, my team at the middle school, Judy Delu, starting with Judy Delu, and then Jason and Claudine. Um, it's really, I never played a team sport. I was a dancer and it's been really phenomenal to have experienced a truly top-notch team. Actually two of them, one with Judy and then the other with Jason leading the charge. And then of course, there are all these fantastic teachers and service providers, some of whom are on the screen tonight. It's been um, such a rewarding career to work with teachers and coach teachers and enjoy time and laughter with teachers and hard times too. And we've done some really hard things this year and we've done them, I think, very, very well. And then lastly, Working with kids, it's just the greatest career of all. So that was an awfully nice proclamation. I can't remember the exact words that you said, Jeff, but I think it ended with something about being in the service of children. And that was a great way to spend 30 years. So thank you all very much. And I will miss you. Thank you. <clears throat> We will make sure to get an invite to you all next year because we will definitely be having a retirement party next year to get us back on track. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. It's good to see you. Good. And Nan, good to see you. It's been a little while. So I... <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Uh, we have another uh, special recognition. Uh, I don't want to call it a ceremony. I just call it a celebration. And, that, <laughs> and that's to uh, thank uh, Grace, uh, our representative from the high school for two years. Uh, Grace, thanks so much for doing all that you do. Thank you. And it's been wonderful. It's been great. And uh, all the best at Harvard. Thank you. <laughs> Anything you'd like to say? Yeah. Well, I'm very honored. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, just being able to come to these board event meetings these past two years has definitely been well one of the highlights um, of high school in the past two years and just being able to kind of have this support system too as well and if I have any concerns being able to have like um, a little support system with everyone and being able to come and um, let everyone know not just what's happening but also if you have concerns 
And it's also been able, um, helped me being able to become closer with other kids throughout my grade as well, just being able to talk to them if it's people on each sports team to get the sports updates, or if it's just um, different people on other clubs and everything and asking them what's going on and just making sure I can be the best representative as possible. And so I just thank you all for giving me this opportunity and for helping me throughout these past few years. Oh, wonderful, That's wonderful. Great. Thanks, guys. Definitely gonna miss you, Grace. I'll try to fill in her shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I, like. I just thought because I didn't know what you, what you were gonna do that. But you know, Grace, I want to thank you because you know, I think it was your junior year when we were having a vaping conversation. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. And we were all definitely at different levels of knowledge and we started having a conversation and you really gave us some insights and then we learned that you're like the peer rep for and you're going to Ireland and doing some of, you know so we learned so much value but over time we've learned we knew we could count on you and now like understand what's going on and, and understand so we really appreciate all that you've done so thank you for and best of luck at heart and I just are you gonna are you gonna try to keep swimming? Um, I'll probably swim on a club team. Yeah, club team, I'll, yeah. I'll definitely keep swimming. Yeah, they've got a great swimming pool up there. Yeah, um, yeah, so it's really nice. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay. This kid never not thinks about a swimming pool. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Good. Always. Good. Uh, okay. Um, let's see. We'll move on then. Uh, and uh, we have some minutes for approval, but I don't see that they're, we did not, they didn't they get posted, posted. In, the, in the board doc. So we will roll that to our June 21st meeting uh, for approval of those minutes. Uh, so that brings us to special reports. And I don't, no did, 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 did we see a second? No. So that means we get to turn it back over to Grace for the last <laughs> time and then Sashi um, for their updates on how things are at the high school. Okay, sounds good. So. Um, something that's exciting happening this weekend is senior prom, um, and a lot of students are super excited for it, including myself, <laughs> and we have a tent um, all set up and ready, and then it's going to be like kind of indoor, half indoor, half outdoors, just making sure um, we can keep that as safe as possible, and then we're also having food trucks come, and it's going to be in the Grandford House at Broughton, and I was talking to Miss Kelly a little bit before this, and she said that we have a little bit over 200 people because planning to come, which is really Good. exciting for now. And um, also senior awards are happening during this week and school on Wednesday. And um, the seniors are also currently voting on their graduation song um, so, oh, yeah. so we can decide and then have it approved. Um, and then overall, it's ha it has been a great year, um, in my opinion, despite everything the obstacles that we face with COVID, but I think that um, well, you've all done a very good job of being able to stay on top of things and provide um, as, as the best education possible throughout this year. So thank you all. <laughs> so the Thanks, National course. Honor Society held its induction ceremony for seniors and juniors today during the last fall of school since their seniors couldn't hold their in person last year. So that was really exciting to have everyone there. Unfortunately, we didn't have anyone come in, but I believe it will be posted in a couple of days for everyone to watch. Um, our junior fun day was planned for last Saturday, but was unfortunately canceled due to the boys across state's game, which took um. over the turf. So we got booted out. Um, and then the SAT was this past Saturday, and then the ACT is next Saturday at 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sashi, so did your fun day get rescheduled? No, we did not reschedule it. We put out a poll um, asking the students, and we didn't get that much feedback, like with concern, like I want this so bad. So um, I think as a Senate as a whole, we just wanted to say that we tried and tried to replace prom. Obviously, it wouldn't actually be a replacement, but um, with such short time, it wasn't possible. Any yeah. questions? I just, I'm not a question. I just want to yeah. thank you for the efforts there. I know that that was very challenging, and I think that you guys have put a tremendous amount into trying to do something. So yeah. it was really disappointing, but it was, and it happened so fast. I was just talking to one of my friends, and I was like, what happens if you guys win? They were like, oh, we play yeah. on the third. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 so 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
was a challenging year for everybody. And uh, I think that our students have shown us one thing, and that's that they're willing to work hard. And they have such great resiliency to get through challenging times. And I wouldn't change that for the world. So I'm, I'm very excited for this year. I'm, I'm very excited for next year. And I, I look forward to the work. So thank you again. Thanks, Shane. Thank you. Very good. Great. All right. Uh, we'll move on to the next item under personnel, which is a uh, proposed appointment of a one FTE 12 month assistant superintendent of curriculum instruction and assessment. And Jeff? Yes, uh, it brings me uh, great pleasure uh, to bring forward uh, Annalise Spaziano uh, as our recommended candidate for the uh, assistant superintendent uh, position. Uh, Annalise is currently in uh, Milford, the Milford Public Schools. Um, she's the instructional supervisor for uh, development and uh, student development and wellness. Um, she's been a principal. Uh, she's done a number of things, as you saw from her uh, her resume, and uh, just uh, is really ready to hit the ground running. You know, we've come so far as a district in the last five years under the tutelage of Amy and the work that she's done. Um, and I think Annalise is going to really complement to keep that work going. Uh, and that's what's really exciting. And, uh, you know, I know uh, Annalise is excited. Uh, we're all excited to have her with us. She brought her family with uh, her tonight. So hopefully we'll give her a chance to introduce her, her family as well. Um, she, uh, just a couple of specifics too. Um, she got her uh, BA uh, in environmental science and policy from Clark University. She's been a science teacher um, at a high school level, right? Secondary, you 712 certification in science, master's in environmental education, and six-year educational leadership degree as well. So uh, a wealth of uh, experience, uh, 22 years or 23 years in Milford? I can't speak. I think it's like somewhere. Somewhere in the 20s? <laughs> it's been a lot, yeah. Been a while in one district. So, you know, the, there's, you know, that, that's a change. You know, to be in the same district for, for so many years well, and to, to come mm -hmm. join us in East Line speaks to, you know, the research and the homework she did on our district uh, and, uh, you know, how much uh, we appreciate her uh, joining us and, and taking a, uh, uh, the reins for uh, assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction and assessment. So okay. with that, I'll turn it back over to the board. Okay, good. And, and I'd also like to thank Kate and uh, Candace yes. for thank serving you. on the uh, on the uh, interview committee and all the hard work you put in on that. And so, uh, Candace, would you like to make a motion? I would be delighted to. I'd like to move for approval the proposed appointment of Annalise Spaziano, 1.0 FTE, 12 month assistant superintendent of curriculum, instruction, and assessment. Kate, okay, would you like to second that? Second. Okay, second that. Any further discussion on this item? Okay, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody oppose? Anybody want to abstain? Passes unanimously. And Annalise, congratulations and welcome. <laughs> chance to introduce uh, Chris, Rachel, and Nicholas sure, as well. absolutely. So um, family in tow tonight. I have my husband, Chris Bandiano, here with me. My son, Nicholas, <laughs> and my daughter, Rachel, who's going to be a freshman next year. Boy, that's so, awesome. Uh, thank you so much uh, for everything. I know that was a really busy time of year for everybody. And um, coming off of such a difficult year and filling um, the administrative positions that you have open, um, everybody's time is so precious. So I really appreciate the time, energy, and effort that the district put forth in the screening process to fill this position. Um, you know, I am absolutely 100% delighted. Um, as Mr. Newman had mentioned, um, you know, this was just as much as I was being interviewed, I was coming in making sure that this, that East Line was a great fit for me. And what I can tell you is that um, what I heard this evening with regards to um, the words from your retirees and um, how special East Line is, you know, you can read it, you can look on websites, you can sort of get a vibe from people when you're in the interview process, but to hear it first hand from people who have served a number of years in a district, how special it is to them. Um, 100% just solidifies for me that this is absolutely the, the, the right direction and next step. So I am excited to um, pick up where Ms. Drown um, has left off and I am ready to hit the ground running and um, really looking forward to getting to know each and every one of you um, more closely um, as we work to continue to move the district forward. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, And this will be in District Thursday, too, yeah, so we're going to walk around. Good.
Oh, that's excellent. That's okay. right. And Annalise, on your first day, um, if you find yourself in New Haven, you've turned the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably going to be the hardest part of the job. <laughs> I know that there will be a day that I do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I'm going to allow them to uh, say, to, to go home. I'm going to walk them out while Mr. Bickgood uh, is going to introduce the Minecraft. Uh, okay. Piece. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you at graduation. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Very yeah. good. Excellent. You're doing well. So I think we're going to move on to a demonstration of Minecraft. So yeah. Two students, oh, and we've got Ben DaCosta and we've got Colin Dumont. And I had the chance to meet with Ben and Colin today, and I met with Ben last week to give me an overview of Minecraft, which I'm going to be honest, I don't really know a lot about, but I know more and more about it. And it was interestingly enough, um, it intrigued me more. So my home did a little work. They're going to present so much more information than I possibly could. So there are experts. Guys, can you hear me? Hello, I really appreciate it. I know you're going to do Yeah. That. So I'm going to turn yeah. it over to you, okay? You all set? All right. Yeah. Share screen. All right. Uh, this one right there. How old are they, Jason? How old are they? Eighth grade. All right. Six. 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 All right. So we would like to start off by saying thank you for having us. And um, I would also, can you guys see our screen share? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Minecraft is a game where you're in the world with no limits. There are blocks around you that you can harvest in place to build amazing things. You can also collaborate with your friends and work together on a similar goal. You start out with nothing and work your way up to get valuable materials, stronger armor, and tools. Cool part about Minecraft is you don't have to follow a certain path. You can choose what you want to work on. You can work on anything you dream of. You can follow a story to get powerful items, or you could use your problem-solving skills to, big, to make big contraptions and machines. Now we will show you a short video of the world we created together. Next, we will talk about using Minecraft in our schools. It can get kids interested in activities and cover subjects like creativity, problem solving, and teamwork. There is also a Minecraft education edition that can cover most core subjects. <clears throat> For example, math, science, and language arts. Now I will show you the Minecraft Education Edition website and another video that shows how Minecraft has helped other schools. So this is the website right here. And down here is all the information about Minecraft Education Edition. And there are some assignments that your teachers can use with your class. And here's the video that they made about it. Yeah. 
Thank you for giving us your time. We hope you take our proposal into consideration. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> any questions for Bob or Colin? I missed what's the proposal. Yeah, I missed that part too. Well, I think part of it's a summer piece too, right? We were looking at, uh, and yeah, we're, we're, I, we're, I we're, left. We run sorry. Minecraft in the past, but we wanted to run it over the summer. We have some right. that are interested. We have a couple of teachers that are interested. So I think the boys bring up a great point that um, it, it not only represents what we can do with Minecraft, but just the importance of clubs at the middle school level, just to give kids opportunities to do various things that are maybe not quite ready to be involved in all the things that we do at the high school level. But clubs are such an integral part of our program in the middle school. And we've always got a, a very loyal, loyal following for Minecraft. So we're, we're hoping to run it over the summer. We, as I said, we have a couple of practices. We're probably going to mirror the um, extended school year schedule with that and give the teacher a little flexibility with the time. Oh, good. Well, yeah. So, long. so yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Um, I support all that. I agree with all of that. And I'm just wondering, do you have a project or a problem specifically related to our district that we're going to try to solve or that you would try to solve? Is that something that we could potentially use as something that would be applicable to things that we are thinking about or dealing with? I mean, I, I think we can talk to the kids more and, and particularly the proctor who's going to manage that club for us. Um, but I think one of the beauties of Minecraft, it does allow kids to just really unleash that creativity side they have and, and see where they go with it. Mm -hmm. But I think another important thing is the collaboration among the kids in the group. And what they expressed to me when we met is that the beauty of it is you can be in person, but you don't have to be. Right. But there's still this, this real depth of collaboration that you can even do remotely because they just build off each other's ideas and then share and exchange ideas. And so I think that's, a, that's kind of at the heart of it. Yeah. yeah, let's see. Jamie, you had a question. So, <clears throat> all three of my kids play Minecraft. Um, so, I'm pretty familiar with what happens in Minecraft. There's like the safety mode where you don't die, there's the zombie mode where you die, there's like where you build cities and towns and you're very creative and all that. I guess I missed, besides the creative aspect of it, what's the educational aspect of it? I missed that part of the presentation. And I guess my second part of it is, is what are you looking for from the board? Like, what is it you're looking for besides just getting a club up and running? I'm sure there's. Yeah, I, I think it was more information. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. They just yeah. want you to be aware of some of the benefits of that. And in terms of educationally, um, you know, I think that again, that problem solving piece of it and that creativity, I think a lot of times we, we expect a certain answer from kids, but yet this allows kids to just leave that area behind and then gotcha. just go off in a direction. It, it said mm -hmm. Minecraft Education Edition, so I thought there was going to be some kind of like history and learning something. There so is, oh, there well, well, I thought there was going to be something to it, but I, I missed yeah, there's it. some further pieces yes. today. Was just to give it over. Yeah, there, yeah. There is. I went into Minecraft Education, but if you go into Minecraft Education, there's a whole part for history. You can go back into any era. And they have Minecraft education of uh, things in the history stuff. In ELA, you can have kids go in and basically create their own textbook or their own fictional book. And what they can do is make pages. And then you guys can correct me, you can post links to pictures and videos that you can build your own story 
that has a video link to the text that you're putting in and they can actually put it into a book and uh, you can make it as a PDF and then you can submit it to a teacher, right? Yes, and um, also teachers can create lessons for their kids that they can do like while the kids are in Minecraft, if they're playing around with each other in the game, um, just having fun, kid, teachers can have lessons pop up on their screen. And so while they're going through Minecraft, building things and stuff like this, they can also have like math equations come up, uh, lessons, all sorts of things. Sure. And there's also some that Minecraft and other teachers around the world have already created. Um, cool. for them to use. Yeah, yeah, there's an entire library of um, pre-made um, assignments inside of that website by other teachers that you could, could talk to those teachers and see how they made it. Aside from what your kids are doing, there's a license to go to Minecraft for Education. There's a payment for it. If it's done as part of the school system, it's part of Office 365. So if it's coming in as part of the school system, all these kids get on the education part for free. So yeah, it's a you know, you know, But it's free because we have Office 365. The license comes through the school, right? It's not the stuff that most of the kids are doing. It's a very, very rich component. In fact, I saw what Ben and Colin did. They were doing, um, as part of the Pilgrims landing in uh, Plymouth Rock, they built a full replica of Plymouth, uh, the whole Plymouth Central bit, oh. with the, uh, the, uh, the ship they came over on, they built the harbor, they put cod in there, they had paths going over to the Native American villages, they built a whole farm with the corn and the turkeys and the pigs, and they had a church at the center of the village. Uh, it was absolutely incredible how they replicated that whole thing using Minecraft for education. No, nice, you know, nice, nice. I've yeah. seen some of the things that they've done with science. And the one question I had for you guys though was like, who taught you this? You, you, you really know, you really showed your proficiency in Minecraft tonight with all you created with your own world. Who taught that to you? Um, well, we, mo we learned most of it on our own, just experimenting in the game and just, um, playing it yeah but youtube creators also make videos on the game and so we can watch and sometimes we watch those like on our own um and we just learn some things from there as well um do you have anything about that yeah and i i like to say it's like five years ago when i played it i was like going around in my world building dirt huts and now i'm building huge castles in our world yeah. It's their experience. Good, good. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Well, Ben, good luck Colin, this summer. wonderful. Yeah. Thanks so much for, for putting the presentation together. We really enjoyed it. And it, it certainly is, uh, um, it looks like it's a lot of fun. So, uh, and, and informative. So, very good job. It'll be a good yeah. summer club. Thank you. Yep. Thank, you. Thank you for having us. Well, no, I was just going to add in that we do have licenses. So because of 365, we do have licenses. So because of the conversation that we have, what we typically do is through curriculum revision, we have lists of instructional resources that we'd like teachers to look at. Yeah. So we did add the Minecraft education oh. edition on our list of nice. sort of instructional nice. resources that if we it's wanted awesome. embedded, we certainly can because Barry's right with the 365 we have a license for good. our students yeah. to be able to have yeah. access to it. Oh, them. very good. Excellent. And these guys well, thank you, taking, boys. They're already taking advantage of the educational piece of it. As well, yeah. It sounds like. Yeah. It does sound like. Yeah. yeah. So we open up the educational license for the club at the middle school. So when the kids do the club, they're yeah. operating underneath our license. But we haven't nice. opened it up and integrated it into actual units of instruction. But we have it. We've added it because of the conversation that we've had. Good. Here. Great. What these guys have figured out: when you get into Minecraft for Education, you get ten free sessions, and once that's done, you have to start paying. So they figured out how to go into different trials. <laughs> so they keep building up. Sorry. We have not yet gotten a license. We have not yet gotten a license for them. Barry, you're, you're, you're telling you're telling us telling their secrets. Yeah, <laughs> well, just show you how creative the kids are. When they're oh, yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much, guys. Good job, guys. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Excellent. That was, that was fun. Okay, let's move on uh, to our next discussion item. Uh, ESY and the Summer Instructional Pathways Update. Uh, yeah. yeah, Amy and, uh, or Kim and Amy, I should say, is going to yeah. go first with ESY. They're just going to give a quick, quick uh, brief overview of where we are um, with uh, you know, ESY staffing uh, components. The dates even, Kim, I don't know if we, the dates are out there, but yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> so get back to coming up to the podium again. Yeah, wow, that was just a little while. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, extended school year is starting um, July 6th after the Monday holiday and runs until uh, the Thursday of uh, I think August 6th. So, it's five weeks and uh, we'll be mostly at the middle school um, and a little bit at Haynes for the preschool and the ABA programs and the therapeutic uh, program for the elementary age based on equipment and um, functionality of the environment. Uh, you know, so students know what they're coming into and provide some routine. Um, we sent out a confirmation survey about two weeks ago to families, um, and we had about 162 families recommended this year for our students, I should say, recommended for ESY, and we have about 130-something as of today, um, you know, just responding to that survey in a yes or no fashion, uh, and the majority are coming. So it's a larger number. Last year we had about 110 students, so that's definitely um, an increase this year for services. Um, we are almost fully staffed, but we are still missing about four teaching positions. Um, so it's been a little trickier this year to get some of the more specialized programming. Um, so if anybody is listening is interested in teaching a preschool class or a preschool class um, <laughs> Uh, for students on the autism spectrum, we'd really love to have your application. Um, we're doing pretty good with the uh, support staff, um, but you know we're reviewing applications every day because we also are trying to uh, maximize uh, class size numbers. Um, sometimes you know we find that at the seventh and eighth grade level we can combine that group because there's a smaller number who actually attend just because they have lots of other summer obligations as well. So there's it's still a, a, a moving target, if you will, but, you know, on track, uh, as we usually are, and um, it's really nice to not be, we have our staff meeting tomorrow uh, with all the adults, and it's really nice to not have a 50, last year I had a 50 slide PowerPoint presentation to go over all the COVID guidelines that we're going to be required for coming together in the first sort of school opportunity with COVID upon us um, after the closure. So I'm, I'm looking at it and I have about five slides. I'm like, wow, what else am I going to talk about? This is crazy. So I'm um, really excited. We have a good time in the summer. I think that, um, you know, we, we also this year added a school psychologist for the whole summer, all the weeks. Um, and we're going to be infusing social skills classes for everybody, whether that's on their IEP or not, just to try to expand that opportunity because we know kids have been so separate and had um, not as many opportunities for those extracurricular activities. So we will have the school psychologist working with all the teachers to um, bring lessons into the classroom around the SEL and just, you know, play and collaboration and problem solving for kids in the social arena, if you will. So any questions? I think that's a quick no, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. We're building the bus routes, bus routes for ESY too. And so it's going to be a walk in the park for you this year, Kim. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, it, 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 <laughs> no, but you know, if you remember, Kim, Kim went out on a, a little oh, last year. Yeah. You know, with, yeah. with being one of the first ones out of the gate to exactly. bring kids back. Bring you know, back. I mean, the courage she had to do that, amazing. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, yeah. yeah thank you, Kim. Right. Yeah. So really looking forward to it. I look forward to it being on site with the kids because I'll be the administrator for the program. So I camp out in an office at the middle school with Jason, and um, you know, get to see everybody face to face, and, and you know. Roll up my sleeves and work alongside everybody. Good. That's, well, that's great. Very good. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Kim. Appreciate Thank it. You. So, unlike Kim, <laughs> I came up with a brainchild called Summer Instructional Pathways. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we are employing 32 staff members that will be supporting the Summer Instructional wow. Pathways. Wow. We have two different pathways that we are offering. One of them is the Universal Pathway, which is really around summer reading. And the math challenge. So the governor's summer reading um, 
program and then the State Department's math challenge. Our biggest barrier with those two programs is the State Department released both programs a week ago. So we are turning around the program and the structure of it and the way that we're enhancing it and the weekly opportunities for our students within a two week time period in order to get that up to parents. So I have managers and teachers that are currently working on the summer reading and math challenge ideas. And we will be rolling out all the universal pathways to parents next Monday and Tuesday. There will be two different notifications that come out. Everything will be housed on the district website, right on the front of the district website that says summer learning. So no matter what you'd like to do in order to engage with your child or have your child engage in, it will be in one place. So the other two parts of our universal pathway, meaning that it goes to any student that's enrolled in East Lyme, is we are also opening our software licenses to make sure that at every level, there is at least a literacy and math software open to our students for the term of the summer instructional pathway. So should students want to work on sort of personalized skill development, we have opened up elementary, middle, high, the software that we're promoting are encouraging our students to utilize should they want to do that. So we want to promote choice and flexibility to our families and our students over the summer. The third piece of the universal pathway is we also have what are called enrichment choice boards which I am working with the literacy consultants and math staff across the district in order to identify enrichment opportunities for kids that want to further their skills beyond the grade levels that they're in K-8. So all of that will be posted, distributed to families and everything by the beginning of next week, and it will be posted on the website ready for a level of engagement with that. There will be calendars that families will get for summer reading and math challenge. So you'll have an idea of what's synchronous or asynchronous. What are opportunities where my kid might have time to the ability to come on site and be with their peers? Because we really want this to be a summer of support for our students, both SEL as well as academic, if you will. So that's sort of universal for every um, Eastline student and having that available. The other pathway inside of the house is our targeted um, intervention pathway. Mm -hmm. We came across a barrier, as Jason is experiencing right now with his math coach. Um, we had two people apply for the math intervention teaching position. We have posted it five times. We have communicated with districts all over the state of Connecticut. It seems that many people are having a hard time right now filling even math teacher positions, let alone math coach positions, if you will. Um, it is a serious shortage from the State Department and is one that we've decided that we just don't have the capacity to be able to execute a math intervention pathway. We've mm -hmm. tried, we've gone out there on a limb, we've gone out there publicly, I've even produced uh, notices to learn and things of that nature, and it's just not something that we're finding movement on, and it seems to not just be us, um, which, which is sort of, I guess, validating to see, but also at the same time, it will allow us to ramp up some of the opportunities though, that we have for students. So you're going to notice on the math side, my CIL, as well as my math curriculum fellow at the middle school and my math curriculum fellows at the elementary, have ramped up the math side of the house, especially for our secondary and our elementary students for some of those interventions. And know that some of those families will still be notified by some of our math staff for some additional supports because we mm. know that those kids still, still need to grow. But we're going to own that with the staff that we have. Yeah. Our literacy intervention parents were sent out notifications, a combination of last Friday as well as today. Overall, we had a list, believe it or not, K to 12. We had a list of 462 students that qualified for the literacy intervention pathway. Wow. Um, one of the things that we had to do is then looking at the list is we had to set out the opportunities that we're asking parents by Friday to let us know if they are interested in the up to three times a week and um, intervention services that their child would receive. I do have to say we have several of our literacy consultants and specialists who are also offering to support the literacy intervention and we'll see what we get. I have done a lay of the land regionally. It seems that most of the region when they're sending out academic support stuff for the summer average is 30 to 40% return of actual enrollment is what they're starting to see regionally from parents. So I have reached out to just towns all around us and my assistant superintendent group just getting a sense of what are you getting for return rate, just so I can get a pulse as to what the wow. deal is. I do have already a hundred no's. So I do know those are immediate, like we're done. My, the summer is gonna be something different for my kid and we are expecting that. I mean, the principal can speak. I mean, we have some people who need a break too from the process. So what they get then is they get a, they'll get a communication around the asynchronous thing. Right. They're eligible for their kid. 
and they'll get a follow up communication in regards to that as well. Encouraging them to utilize some of our software, use some of those choice cards, and just keep the learning on the map. Abby DeMars, who's currently the Coastal Connections uh, part time administrator and assistant principal of the high school, is the administrator for the Summer Instructional Pathways Program. So know that her and I have been a colleague in the work and that she will be sending out weekly communication to every East Line parent from July 6th to August 13th while it works, just to keep promoting summer learning and any experiences that are happening during the course of that week and directing parents to the website. Just as a means of keeping things on the radar, it's really all we can ask to do. Wow. So um, it has been an interesting experience to create a summer school uh, type experience. And I think that's one of the things that we found is that um, we were a little surprised. We have more external candidates teaching for us than internal. Um, and part of that is because we have, and I've had a lot of conversations with teachers um, who really want to do it. They just don't know that they have the energy and the sure. ability to come into it sure. after a year yeah. this year. Yeah. So I, I'm happy with the fact that we have over 30 staff that are willing to support the pathway program between Kim and I. You know, we're trying to, wow. we're also pulling from some of the same people as well that are working for both of our programs. So. Um, I do believe it's the right thing to do for kids. I do have to say, we ran our staff meeting today. My staff, they are ready. Mm. They are ready to go. They're ready to do great things for kids. They're ready to really connect kids over the summer and be a support to them. So I feel pretty confident as to the direction and the fact that we are, we are leveraging um, what we've learned through the pandemic in order to create an engaging summer experience for them. Good. Wow. So I do, feel, I do feel good about that. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, yeah very. It's going to be all virtual. No, no. So we are actually allowing. So, for example, um, my literacy intervention group, when they have, they're going to receive a caseload of students for them, and depending on the goal for the student, it could be on site or virtual. And then, and we'll use the middle school just like Kim does. And then for summer reading and the math challenge, same thing. We we're going to offer some on site opportunities. We're going to offer some virtual opportunities just to keep providing families flexibility. When you go to the right, where there's the choice issues, are all those virtual? The enrichment choices are, are they're asynchronous. They are not controlled by staff. We do not have staff working on those. Those are just asynchronous posted opportunities there. So that's like if you have a Minecraft camp, the kids are all just going to get on it together? Well, Camps are through the middle school, so that would be with a teacher. Camps aren't through yeah, separate. me. Uh, this is more of like a, a passport, for example. One of the things is like a passport for these math skills. So my seventh and eighth grade math teachers created this passport. Like it, it's called New York City, I'm going to say. And it's like a passport where you need to do this challenge. And after completing this challenge, you sort of move to this. And it's like an enrichment, but they're all challenging multi-step problems associated back to New York City, Metro Travel, and it came out of the minds of two seventh and eighth graders who actually created it a year ago. And the teachers have marked it into a student created enrichment activity. It's really an eight problem set for algebra one and to prepare them for oh, sort of where they're headed. Huh. So clubs are really a third option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Clubs yeah. Are beyond me. Yeah, That's right. and then we have clubs as well. You're right. They're, you're right. Which we haven't run clubs in. Yeah. Something yeah. So, so yeah. and those, I options. understand, clubs, are they all a virtual or on site, or are they all on site? It depends which, what, what the club is, but it's better for the teachers to, it's very hard to fill some of these club positions to over the summer. Yeah. So it's more than the teacher. And it's a different, um, all that, it's a different pay structure for the teacher. Yeah. 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 Candace? Ooh. I just want to say that it's very exciting to listen to it all kind of come together. I think that you create a very comprehensive program for the summertime, and I'm excited for it. I think that you're really touching all aspects of what is needed for children and giving different opportunities for kids, for families to participate in whichever works best for them. Yeah. Uh, the number doesn't surprise me. Um, I think that yeah. we are going to see high numbers. Um, and I think that you're prepared for that. 
you know, I think that you've done an incredible job preparing our district for that. So I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, and wow. I feel like that's one of the skill sets we've gained over this yes. year is how do you, how do we stretch our capacity mm -hmm. and think about it differently? So in some cases, you might need to see these kids one-on-one -on -one and on-site, whereas other kids, and that's one of the things that my literacy and math staff are helping me with is that when we actually get the caseloads of students, identifying, they already know the kids who struggled as virtual right. learners. Yeah. So they're going to put notes on that caseload and say, we strongly encourage that at least your first couple sessions are on site because that's been the best way because we have to know lessons learned from engaging with these mm -hmm. students to make sure that we're sort of hitting the road with sort of time and Good. Very good. good. Very good. Yeah. Nothing wrong. Like, yeah. Yeah. Very, I just wanted to just clarify on the, the enrichment side, that challenge in New York, mm -hmm. that's going to be all virtual with the kids just like online with following through the steps. No interaction with teachers or other kids? Or? There will be no interactions with teachers for the enrichment choices. For the no. enrichment part. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. Good. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Have we, yeah. Yep. Okay. And just so you're aware, I have set the stage, and I don't know if Abby, she's on, so I know that she's listening. I have set the stage that the board will want to know the outcome, the sort of attendance data, as yeah. well as. Um, sort of goal outcome for the intervention. So just know that she will be prepared okay. and maybe you might bring a couple of the staff at the end Great. of the pathways to be able to give an actual report out, whether you want it mid or end on the summer and circle pathways. You set that accountability mark knowing that you're financially supporting it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we might ask Amy to volunteer her time to come back. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just putting it out there. You know, yeah. we'll yeah. see. Yeah. On the enrichment part, will the kids be able to keep their computers for that? No. No. So if they don't have a computer, they can't do it. No, they're going to be able, they can pick theirs up if they have it. So we're going to make accommodations if mm -hmm. kids need it, but we also need their devices back in order to sort of clean them up and get them ready as well for next year. So they can, if they're, they're on that, they can apply for you and say, I can take this one I have in school home for the summer yep. to do the enrichment part. Yes, so when okay. I send out the notification on the Universal Pathways, there will be a bottom spot right there for parents to sign up if they would like to go ahead. But we have to have them recollect it the week of that July 6th because we need a little bit of buffer between when we're collecting it, cleaning sure. it up. Because in some cases, in some of my grade levels, I actually have to switch their device. Right. Um, because, you know, my K1 kids are on an iPad first when they get to second grade, they're on a laptop. So I actually need the iPad back. And just like my seniors, I need my I need my senior laptops back because I got to give them to my second graders. Right, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. So I mean, that's part. part of why it's a little bit. We started going down the road of like, yeah, all the kids on ESY and summer and social have a key phone. We're like, what? <laughs> no, we're gonna do that. Yeah. So and then instead, we're like, no, we'll collect them and then we'll make a bin by teacher for all the ESYs, mm -hmm. and then I'll open up assigned times for parents. If you want to come and grab your child's device earlier, we can do that. That felt a little bit easier for us to manage. Yeah. Got it. We yeah. don't have a so much that goes into it. Yeah. Like, oh my god. Yeah. 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 So a lot a of little bit parts. Of that. So. Amy is wonderful, fantastic. Thank you, Amy. And thanks, Kim. Yeah, it will be, it will be good. I, I, every day I get closer to believing that we're pulling this off. <laughs> <laughs> every day, it gets a little bit closer. And you know, a a Abby's excited. Abby's done a great job <laughs> yeah. for us as well this year, and she just is picking She's up. She's been a great uh, partner in there. Yep. Yeah, so we're for excited sure. to have her run with this this summer and uh, sure. continue the yeah, continue the great work. Okay, so we'll move on to our next uh, discussion action item. That's the proposed 2021-2022 uh, East Lawn Public School tuition rate for out of district um, students, and this was reviewed at the FFO. Uh, Meeting it was earlier this week. Yeah, or, or next or last week. Next seven agenda items so all went to yeah. FFO. We had a busy FFO uh, uh, meeting uh, last week. But you can see uh, from the sheet, um, we did go up. Looks like about four hundred and thirty-two dollars yeah. uh, for tuition uh, for next year. Mariana ran the calculation out, so um, you know, pretty pretty straightforward um, based off of uh, how that's uh, devised. Um, if anybody has any questions, you know, it's that yeah. yearly. Bringing it forward each year, so you can yeah. see what that rate is. Yeah. Eric, was there anything to add from the? No, no, no. 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 It's, it's, yeah, it's really straightforward. There's a policy with the calculation, and they're following the policy literally. Not much else. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So, uh, anybody like to make a motion? Um, 
I would like to make a motion to approve the proposed tuition rate for out of district students attending ELPS for the 2021 2022 school year at $19,866. This does not include special education programs, coastal connections, or high school students from yep. Salem. Yep. I'll second. And Canvas seconds it. Any more discussion on this item? Nope. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody want to abstain? Passes unanimously. And that brings us to our next item for discussion action. That's proposed substitute rates for the 21-22 school year. Yeah, so uh, exciting. a little more exciting, yes. Um, we're quickly finding that, um, you know, well, we knew this year substitutes were uh, in great demand and that uh, we had a shortage. Um, and as we continue to work and talk with Kelly and look across, you know, the, the region and districts, the rates are going up. Uh, hence, uh, you know, our rates need to go up as well. Um, we talked through this, you know, at FFO and actually at FFO, we kind of projected out to looking, you know, years ahead, but we're focused uh, obviously on next year and what that proposed uh, rate uh, would be for, you know, a basic substitute teacher. Um, and then you can see the rest, you know, the extended sub that's a, you know, a 10 to 39 day in the same position. Um, and long-term uh, subs were over 40 consecutive days. They have to have certification uh, in that uh, in that respective field that they're teaching. Um, and then uh, our hourly rates for, for sub professionals as well. So we're here to answer any questions. We've had you know, a good working relationship with Kelly as well. And uh, we wanna continue with them, obviously. Um, hopefully that pool of subs will become more robust as we get into next yeah. year. Yeah. I think, yeah. it, I think, you know, I, I hope it will. So any specific questions? Anything they add, Eric? From FFO yeah, too? I mean, just, I mean we, we did talk about this for a while, and there's some metrics I think that we want to capture as we go forward, but, you know, there are days where we don't have enough substitute teachers, and so the supply is just not meeting the demand, and when we looked, we did benchmark things, talk about other districts, and where we're at the lower end. We're not the lowest, but we're at the lower end, and others are starting to raise theirs to catch up. So I think we almost yeah. have to do this. Um, and otherwise, we're going to be at a place where we're going to have more and more often where we don't have enough subs. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Any, any other discussion on this? Um, I'm going to make a motion on this one. Um, um, good. Good. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, yeah. <laughs> move to um, move to approve the proposed substitute rates for the 2021-2022 school year as presented. I'll second it. Well, they can. Well, let's say it was a. That was, okay, it was a Kate. Okay. Uh, any? I think it was me. Oh, was it? I heard both. Okay. <laughs> both. So I'm going to change it to Jill. <laughs> <laughs> Jill. You're so high, Candace. Oh, my. Okay. So, um, any further discussion on this item? No. Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody want to abstain? Passes unanimously. Uh, next item. Uh, for discussion action, uh, the aquatics membership rates um, at our East Lime pool. Uh, Jeff, you yes. want to say a few words Yeah, and Mr. Boucher is on the line. He's here uh, with us. And, uh, you know, he. Uh, we had two FFO meeting discussions on, on this, going back and forth uh, on these rates. And, you know, really the, the need to, um, to, to increase, you know, the rates. Rob's done an exceptional job, you know, this year. Um, you know, just for having people come in and use the pool, uh, it's been ten dollars uh, each time they've wanted to come in, you know, and swim. Um, so it's helped to keep us afloat, um, no pun intended. But uh, you know, when it comes to the financials, um, but we do need to raise our rates. We we have to in order to keep the aquatics program running um, and keep it in the black, we have to uh, increase our rates. So, Rob, let me turn it over to you for a minute. You can kind of just give us a quick perusal of you know um, what you went to with the rates, and then we can see if there's any questions. <clears throat> so a few changes before um, I address the rates. We previously have offered a uh, annual membership rate at a discount um, equal to 10 months of the monthly fee. Um, this proposal removes that discount and Im implements only the uh, monthly fee. Um, all the monthly fees are the same, except that uh, the same for resident versus non-resident. And we'll be charging a annual initiation fee essentially to non-residents to that desire to use the facility. 
um, <clears throat> that's $125. So that's, that means that upfront non-residents are paying $125 more annually than um, residents. Um, one major uh, section that's changing um, is in the resident senior citizen rates for those 65 and older. Uh, in the past history of the facility, they were we received a free membership. Um, several three years ago, we moved it to fifty dollars annually. <clears throat> Excuse me, and um, I'm proposing uh, a monthly discounted monthly membership of thirty dollars uh, for those folks. Um, so it could be viewed as a significant increase if you are weighing percentages. But this is the largest. Um, patron base in our in our membership. So um, it just comes down to the fact that we need the people who are using the facility to help us fund the operations of the facility. Um, Jeff, do you want me to go through each category? Did, did the board receive this the board had document? Kind of, yeah, yeah, I think if you know, maybe we could turn if there's any questions specific, we could start there. Um, I can't, Kate, Kate, had, Kate, 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 Kate I guess my opinion would be sometimes seniors are financially not as able as other people. I'm just wondering, I feel like we are offering this service as a region. So perhaps asking people who are from out of town to pay a bigger amount rather than uh, asking our seniors who may be on a fixed income who don't have that or. <coughs> would be one thing that I would suggest. The other opportunity might be is to offer a sliding scale if there are seniors who are financially not capable. I, mean, I think the exercise and the opportunities are so important, but when I was swimming, um, it was out of town or out of state, out of town people who were coming in and just bombarding the center. And I was really kind of taken aback by that. So just, just we, uh, Kate, we do have um, a foundation, um, which, is, which I'm the treasurer of, and we actually do provide scholarships to seniors that uh, um, have um, financial difficulties. Um, so as long as people know that, mm -hmm. because I have heard that as a complaint where people said they didn't have enough money but wanted to swim. So the facility does offer a lot, just not to our town, but to our region, just like Miracle Field offers a lot mm -hmm. to the yeah. region. And so our system is going to offer a lot to the region. So I think we're already kind of regionalizing some of our services that we're providing. But I just think it might be an avenue to ask for more money from some people who are not town residents. Jim, yeah. uh, can you put that information in the in the board minutes? Because I didn't realize that until that happened, and I don't know if you share that with the senior citizens center. Yeah, no, it, it's on the it's on the pool on the aquatics it's website. The website. It's all it's all there, no, and it's... we've had the articles, we've had advertise advertisements in the uh, local uh, publications as well. I think people. In fact, see. we even had a big advertisement thanking donors uh, from businesses that donated to the foundation. There's always someone that doesn't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we got it. I know, I know. Well, yeah. I wonder if it should be connected with the senior center because so many people do read that publication that does come out through them that that is available if needed. And just a little bit. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I don't think we've done that. Yeah. yeah. That's good idea. Yeah. Good, that does have good a really suggestion. Good yep. Yep. But okay. Thank you good. Yeah. Yeah, Rob, well, I'm sorry. I mean, we can make sure that it's more clearly advertised on all of our publications regarding our membership fees. And our staff are trained um, to direct folks to the foundation if they if they express a challenge that we're discussing now. So um, I think we can make sure it's well known that there is assistance there for those who need it. Thank you. Yep. Good. Candace, you want to say something? Okay. So yes, um, I think that the advertising could you would benefit by more advertising, to be honest. And I think that if you utilize social media in different ways, um, you'd be able to sell possibly more of the services that uh, the pool area provides. Have you changed or made additions of services to, I guess, justify the, the pay rate? I'm just curious. 
Um, the only big change in that regard is that we used to have the facility, uh, the uh, fitness center as a separate membership class. So you could choose to swim at the pool only, you could choose to use the fitness center only, or you paid what is actually equal to what we're increasing the rates to, to use both facilities. Um, so now it's just one facility membership that includes the fitness center, which some people may not find benefit in, but it does, it is included. There's no, um, you know, a la carte edition of that. Um, but we've also retained the $20 uh, resident fee for fitness center only. Um, there are a few people who like that. It keeps us in competition with the cheaper gyms in the area. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, the bottom line is, is most gyms don't have a pool. So the pool is the really the attractive piece, but you're not getting everything else. I think that that's kind of where I'm going. I mean, I, I just feel like you could really maybe add different services or update the services to justify the pricing. I think that um, I've heard over and over of how expensive it is, um, to be honest with you. And um, I think that it's great that there are scholarships available for um, people, mm -hmm. but um, to justify it, I just kind of, I mean, it's gonna happen, but I just feel like you're not really justifying the price. I, I, I'm just being honest. I mean, sometimes it's not. Can I just ask for a clarification on what updates you're referencing to program? I mean, we, we right now we're not offering any programming for obvious reasons, but traditionally we hold water aerobics, we hold, Swim, you know, swim instruction, we hold, you know, lap swimming time. Um, Rob, aren't, I, uh, Rob, I, I think you're, you're, aren't you um, basically assuring that there are two qualified lifeguards yes. at the, at the pool at all times? Yes, that's another, yeah, that's one aspect of our uh, increase in costs. So. Okay, so you had just mentioned um, that certain services aren't open. So I, I, I don't understand that because gyms are open. Yeah, nothing or, has been open for the pool all year long. All, okay. Only thing that's been open is lap swim. That's it. Okay. That's so all they've come, done. Is, are we in a different category? Or Yeah, swim uh, aquatics has been in a different category. So we have not reopened. We're waiting to the end of the school year. Okay. So. But the gym is open. Fitness, is fitness center so. is yeah. Rob, did uh, is anybody? I don't know if anybody started back using the fitness center. It's no, not until school's out because the you know the inter the biggest challenge during the day is the three waves of lunch. We we don't have the, those designated time in the middle of the day to bring a group in, which is what we used to do from eleven thirty to twelve fifteen. Um, um, or and then um, the demand for it you know, in the evening is just really not um, not there at a place that would justify an additional staff person at this time. So we so will Rex, reopen it when school is over. Just another quick question. How are you advertising the pool and the memberships and what they have to offer? How are we or how will we? There are two different questions. The reason I ask is because we've been, we've been, I have, I didn't, I didn't have the ability to bring too many people in the way that we've been operating this year. So the advertising has been no, because people who are already associated with the facility that wanted to continue using the facility mainly occupied all the space that we had to offer. Um, but going forward, we use the park and rec advertisement book. We use local, um, kid connection type Facebook pages, things like that. Uh, we have in the past advertised in the post road uh, review. Um, and then we push things out through Facebook. Um, we don't really have any other uh, uh, social media accounts at this time, but something we could look to add as we re-expand our staff. Yeah. 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 I, I just I think that it would be very beneficial, and I I know that you've done a great job. I know that the pandemic has really challenged everybody in every program and every business and every everything. Uh, but I I do believe that utilizing that avenue and because it is essentially free and or you can customize yep. it yep. to the needs with ads and that kind of thing to really hyper focus on. Um, what we offer. So it's just a just an idea. Yep. 
No, good, great. Yeah, good, once great. the 17th or the 18th if that hits, I should say, we're back to normal, starting back up with the promoting of the programs. Um, and really, uh, that's the plan as we move through the summer and into the new year. Yeah, it should be good. Good. And I know there's been some complaints about the ten dollars, you know, a session too. That's yeah. pretty expensive. For That's, I don't know if you heard, you know. I've heard a lot of complaints about the, the, the pricing. I really do yeah, because yeah. that's been the problem. Ten dollars, uh, but we, you know, in order to keep the flow, we've needed to, to sure. leave that. Yeah, because yeah. you're yeah. running yeah. back to yeah. membership sure. rates. I think Eric's got his hand up. Eric, good. Yeah, just two first time. I'm going to build on what Canada said. I was going to say this at board comments, so I would say for you now and. Longer, but we have to get much better at social media, like much, much better at social media. And we have a whole building of people that we're sitting in for probably a lot of them are really good at social media. And um, I like that we're starting to post more and, and Twitter and other, uh, and other things, but there's ways to hashtag and other things to make it go so others pick it up and retweet and all that stuff, which is, I'm not good at it, okay? I, I'm, I don't do it, and I'm not good at it. But there's a lot of people who really, oh, are really good, and these are the type of things that we need to really tap into. And I'll talk more at, at, during airport comment, but when you mentioned it, 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 you're right. I mean, we, we can probably drum up a lot of interest through social media if we do it right. Yep. Um, and then in terms of, you know, I, I, we, we did discuss this a lot at, at, um, at FFO because the initial was actually higher than this and we went back and forth. And the challenge that we have is, you know, from my perspective, that you can't run this at a deficit. Right. And we're, you know, this is really what we need right. um, to meet the cost. Um, and I think in the past, we probably we're running a bit of a deficit. Um, and what does that mean? It means that somehow, someday, I think it comes back to us to end up funding or making whole. So um, this is this is essentially running at break, break even. It's a little more than that, but if anything goes wrong, mm -hmm. that's what we tap into. So it's not like, oh, we're running at this, you know, we're gonna make $100,000 at running the pool. This is essentially break even with a few thousand dollar buffer for things that could go wrong, that will go wrong, we just don't know what they are. So that's where we got to, but I, I you know, I definitely had this thick, same sticker shot um, that I'm sure others will see, and we gotta get past that. And that's a communication marketing piece yeah. as well. Yeah. And how do we kind of engage? I think you got the swimmer, the, the people who swim all the time, they're they're gonna come and okay. the competition of the why this is I think this is better than the why uh, and it's obviously closer and so we're it just you know so there was a lot of discussion I think that this is where we ended up with uh, as as reasonable as we can make it and don't forget minimum wage is continuing to go up yeah, that's right yep. as mm -hmm. well so yeah. just keep that in mind that we've got to stay point. above that as well I just want to add one more thing and then I'll be done. So going back to like the services part and in comparison, and I hope everybody can hear me through this mask. I feel like I'm so muffled. Yeah. I keep going like this. I'm yeah. Sorry. Um, is that you You have to compare the services that you're going to get. You've mentioned the YMCA. The YMCA offers a tremendous amount of opportunities and programming and fitness classes and you name it. They pretty much have it. But they are kind of far away. We have the ability to offer those types of programs probably on a smaller scale um, and just kind of maybe thinking outside of the box. Um, there are a lot of, not, I want to say kind of a la carte. So for someone that maybe has mm -hmm. a spin type um, a certification or a nutritionist or could be a bar instructor or what have you, there's lots of specialized people that would probably really jump to the opportunity to utilize the space um, to offer their services and you would pay them a certain amount, however class you know, they, they do. Um, a lot of different places do that. Um, so I just, I urge you to look outside of kind of the box of bringing different services in, because again, I'm going back to that price and I just feel like I bring honesty and it's just not justifiable. I feel like you're getting, yes, you're getting the pool in a limited 
limited, very limited. Um, it is one of the only area pools, except for a, a, just a very a couple. Mm -hmm. um, but we can also add to the options. So people are going to get the pool, which is great, it's convenient, but then they can also get other services too. So yeah. I just I'm just trying to urge to look to make it a little better. Better, yeah. That's all. Yeah, that's good. Okay, good. Okay. He wants to speak. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Rob, go ahead. Yeah, I, I no, I I um thanks for all those ideas. I, I recognize that it's a lot of times you run into a space issue if you're talking um we would have to move into a the south gym for uh spin or fitness classes uh you know yoga whatever it may be so we run into a space problem or we run into an equipment problem you know we don't have a spin studio um so i think all those things are great and some of the things that i have been uh building ideas on include more family engagement on the weekends that would utilize an open gym period if, if it's available. Um, you know, we've had some, uh, in the past, we've had good events where we brought in like a uh, inflatable element for children. Turnout's been very successful. So those are things that we have on, um, you know, on our radar. And I, I think we, we cannot compete with the Y directly. I mean, we don't, I think we recognize that. And I think that's, one reason why we're, you know, obviously limited, we're not pricing ourselves at the same level as the Y's that surround us um, in recognition of not being open all day long and not having the size fitness center, and the studios and things like that to conduct all the other programming. Um, but anything we can do, um, you know, comes across the radar. There's some new things coming in the aquatics world for fitness that you know, we can look into if it if it makes sense financially to start purchasing equipment and, and running more programs then you know those opportunities will be taken advantage of thanks rob good excellent okay okay so um it's always a hard a hard uh, situation i think eric captured it well um in that that basically and there's Rob, is, there's a whole budget projection in there as well. That, given where everything is today, this is kind of a break even, just by a little bit extra to make it all work out. So, um, yeah, the FFO committee really, you know, thumped this. Uh, we actually sent Rob back with the original proposal, and and he came back with a modified one, which brought the rates down a little bit more. So. Um, that's kind of kind of where it's where it's at. I think the suggestions that everybody's been making about about um, building the program now, uh, hopefully now that we're coming out of the the, the uh, pandemic situation, uh, there is there is a lot of opportunity there, and with that opportunity, it could 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 leverage uh, greater participation. That could lead to all sorts of modifications of fee structures as well. So, yeah, but, absolutely. You know, but given where we're at today, this is kind of this is it chance to rebuild yeah so um in order to move forward we would need to need to take action on this so uh er eric are you interested in making a motion i am so i make a motion to approve the proposed aquatic yeah. membership okay. rates for 2021 2022 school year as presented i second that motion oh thanks joe other discussion any other comments okay all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye aye, aye. Anybody want to oppose? Anybody want to abstain? Okay, so it passes unanimously. And Rob, thanks for the hard work. And uh, um, and please uh, keep in mind the, uh, the the great suggestions that, that were thrown out and so on, because hopefully things are going to get a lot better here for you in, in the coming year. So hopefully. Yeah. Yes, thank you all very much. Okay, thanks, good. Well, let's move on to another. Yes. Uh, yeah, another item with um, for discussion action, and this is, has to do with the uh, infamous uh, aquatic center ceiling roof uh, situation, <laughs> which we've lived with for 20 years. Um, Jeff, I don't know if you want to say something. Or you're yeah, to um, I, I'll, I'll turn it over to Chris and Rob. Um, but uh, yeah, you, we've got, you know, as Tim said, it's, it's over 20 years old now. It's, you know, the exterior outside shell of that roof is in real good shape. It's the interior now with the chipping and peeling paint and rust. Um, you've seen some pictures we put in like a weekly update. 
Um, we've struggled a bit with the interior. So Chris, uh, can you share a little bit about uh, this scope of services that uh, we're looking to do just to get an analysis on that roof from uh, Tech John? Sure, I just want to say to Mr. Baker, they're asking if they had any projects for Minecraft folks. I thought they could do that. There you go. It's a roof. They knew that was good. Uh, so <laughs> Those boys briefly, are on their game. Yeah, so just briefly to expand a little further, when the uh, roof was originally built, there was a problem with it, resulted in a settlement. And if I remember right, the initial quantity put into escrow for future use was 80. Yes, that's correct. Um, and currently, with uh, 20 years of interest, it's up here 125 or 130. So we, uh, Rob's on. Um, so Rob had some issues, uh, has had issues over the course of years with uh, further corrosion on the roof structural members. And if you were to walk inside, take a look at the roof or at the ceiling, I should say, you can see rust throughout those uh, areas. And occasionally, pieces of rust are now falling into the pool, and he had a talk about that same head. So I decided it was a good time to take a further look at it. I asked an expert to come in and give us an idea on some proposals or on some ideas and solutions. They did an initial site visit, put together the proposal, um, and that should be before you for a total of $17,000. We would like to use the money in the escrow account uh, to fund that. That's what the purpose really is of the escrow account. Yeah. And what they will do is they'll come in and they'll do a complete evaluation, including removing part of the existing insulation um, and then repairing after the fact, cutting out some sections of metal to do thickness tests and actual corrosion extent tests on those and repair that as well temporarily. Take that back to lab, do the testing, do the analysis, do structural calculations, and then present us with. Uh, they say three potential options, uh, maybe less, maybe more, depending on what they find for the long term. So, uh, the proposal before you're just uh, now, though, is only to do the evaluation and to recommend repair strategies. And uh, we are here because, uh, and speak to Anna Johnson at the town, since it's in a town town, we need both the uh, approval of the board of head and the board of select to do those ones. Specific questions. Uh, just a uh, just a comment too is that the uh, Tecton, the, the company, the architect that's doing the work, Justin is. Uh, I did have done a lot of work with him for Learn, and uh, they're very good. And this the price tag is, uh, I think, extremely re reasonable um, because we've we've looked, had we Jeff and I have taken a look at this in the past years, and we've and the price tag has been sometimes up as as high as close to forty thousand dollars just for the assessment. So. I think this is a pretty good. This is a pretty good deal. Um, yeah. So, uh, so we need to. If we, the, this board needs to approve it, and then it would go. We would take it to the board of selectmen for their approval, so we can dip into that one hundred whatever one hundred twenty five thousand dollars that's sitting there. Yeah. All right. Yep. I would like to recommend the approval by the board of education for the proposed aquatic center ceiling roof investigation in the amount of seventeen thousand ten dollars as presented. Oh, Which one was that? <laughs> Jill got it. Okay. Okay. Any 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 more discussion on this item? Seeing none. Uh, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Does anybody want to oppose? We want to abstain. Okay, passes unanimously. Thanks a lot, Chris, for doing that. Thank don't go too, don't go way too far. So. <laughs> okay, so the next item for discussion yeah. is an update on the East Lime High School baseball field. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Here we go, Chris. Baseball field. Here we go. I thought I Yeah. Yeah. So, go ahead, Chris. Uh, on Thursday, we have a company that we contract with coming to uh, complete physical, chemical, nutrient. Um, all properties for the baseball field, and they're going to provide us a report after the fact, and which should include some suggestions on what we need to do to resolve the field for the long term, either as a continuous grass. Um, and they may mention something about a artificial solution as well, but their focus is on living live. I'm sorry, what was that? Living. I'm sorry. Living, living live turf. Living, living, living live turf. Living gotcha. Live Living live turf. Yes. Will they be so able? Grass. Will they also okay. assess the drainage of the? 
<laughs> that's part, yes, that's part. Drainage part. So I'm sure they're going to have some comments on it. Like yeah. Yeah. Well, that yeah. Is the yeah. There's no fixed irrigation. There is currently a. So it'd be, yeah, that'd be part of it. Get, get something out there, definitely, to you know, to be able to, to water as well once we get a remedy potentially, you know, for this. Yeah. Um, you said too, Chris, they're going to go down deep into the soil yeah, gonna, as well, which boring, so that's probably, yeah. I told them what we knew of the uh, original design as well as what's happened since and weeds. We know that they'll go through at least the top layer that was added in the summer into the layer below that as well. So yeah. we did a pretty good. Uh, Analysis. Good. Okay. Any questions for us now? Uh, what happened with the company who was doing the grubs? Did we get a, a credit or? I, I have them on hold. Okay. So they wanted to, they, they know that when we're done with our analysis, uh, they made an offer about providing some uh, alternative services, but that's all the way to find out what we have first. I didn't want to. Want to do it right away, but we don't want to grow right away. Do they own up to the fact that they didn't do a full service job? Oh, uh, we haven't got that. Okay. We haven't got that out of them yet. You're saying we haven't discussed it with them? I'm sorry. I, you're in a mask. I'm in a mask. Yeah. So um, I, I relayed what our other experts told us was the problem. And okay. They disagreed with us. Mm -hmm. um, so we are not in agreement that we think caused the problem is what they do. So, mm. But they are offering to help make amendments in here. Free for free? No, it's only partial, but part of it for free. Yeah. Yeah, maybe seeding or something along those lines, Jill. Which you know, do we want? Those, Obviously, but, do we want to do business with them again, or are we just going to take? I think it depends on what they come back with when yeah. we kind okay. of negotiate right. that, you so know, we, see what they say. We can walk away from them when, if we want to. Yep. Okay, thank you. I'm yeah. sure if we sign yep. a contract with them. We can walk away. Yep. We just have the angle, the angle work to cure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Roughly, when do you think we'll have the uh, assessment from them? Um, Roughly. The physical physical evaluation, they can do some of it on site, some of their own facilities. Uh, the chemical analysis, some of that's going to have to go out of the labs, but depending on how busy the labs may be, up to two three weeks. So I was overall expecting two or four weeks. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? Oh, okay. So after they come back with their suggestions, we're going to have another sit down and guess oh, gotcha. and see oh, what yeah. Absolutely. their yep. suggestions are, and we'll go from there. Yep, exactly. And, I mean, my kids all done playing baseball, but it's still an important part of the town. So. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Very much so. The direction that I gave them when they're asked what our priorities were, as I said, our number one priority is to have players on the field by next year. Perfect. Yeah. We're going to take that into account for what they want, what they suggest. Okay. Yeah. And it won't be used. We've already reached out, you know, so to you our what, medic office. The yeah, that there's there's no there's no use of it uh, this summer. So okay. Um, All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, yeah. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Chris. So okay. Yeah. Need more to come on the baseball field. We'll yeah. have that back. Uh, Okay, next item for discussion and action is the for the 2021-2022 um, Board of Finance budget allocation. This is this is kind of the re, in the response to the $162,000, which was reduced um, by the Board of Finance to our original proposal. Uh, Jeff and the, and the FFO have come forward with a with a proposal. Yeah, so on top of what, you know, we reduced the 431, you know, 916. Um, as we all know, as Tim just mentioned, you know, the Board of Finance, uh, additional reduction of 162. So um, the pension component, we found out um, pretty close to right when the budget was being passed that um, both on the town side and our side, uh, there was some savings in uh, with the pension. So that was 60,000. So we were able to apply that. So you know, Johnson let us know that that was good news. Um, Mariana, there's an unemployment, you know, component of, you know, you put in 15,000 uh, and then we talked at FFO as well, you know, what, okay, what are we, where are we going to come up with the rest of this, uh, the rest of this money? Um, and we thought about, well, you know, obviously we have the ARP funding. So using some of those dollars, you know, to cover one of our math coaches, um, we had gone back and forth, you know, we should be the social worker at the middle school position or the high school. 
Um, but ultimately, you know, it, it really it should be, you know, covering uh, the math coaches. We talk a lot with the Board of Finance about the math coaches. So I think it's important that we, uh, we have that as uh, in there and we see how it, how it works out. So that's where we're, we're at right now to try and make up um, that 162. Jamie? Can I talk about the math coaches? <clears throat> yeah, we can. So Amy said there's a shortage. <laughs> and I think Jason said there's a shortage. Is there a way to have the State Board of Ed give us a waiver for a person from another state who's not licensed or from this state who's not licensed oh. to get a math coach? That's interesting. Because we, it is we, a shortage area? There's other certification yeah. offerings that yeah. we could definitely go down. Yep, absolutely. These apps we could do. There's different avenues we could do. We try to go through at least two full cycles of posting and really get it out there to see who we get. But then there are other avenues. That we so start this going next down time would be when we change our requirements? Is that what? Well, you can doing? change your requirements or you can, you can do. You can do shortage area. Yeah. You could do... I mean, we're going through this right now with the tech ed teachers, even where, you know, we started reaching out to people who don't have the certification and then come to find out those people are very interested in gaining that certification. So now we're in a different conversation with some people going, oh, okay, so you're interested in getting certified in that. That's great. So, you know, some of those sidebar conversations and some internal, go ahead, Jason. Yeah, so, um, so my initial conversation too is for someone in Connecticut who is a certified teacher, that if they pass the praxis in that, they don't have to take the coursework, but if they can pass that and show that mastery, then they'll be issued a certification. Yeah. I assume mm -hmm. how long that certification that's correct. So that's but true. there is a way for us to get around because it's yeah, a shortage. A, yeah, on a temporary basis. Because I would hate to have to work years. so hard to have a shortage. Yeah. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> no, I know. But there, I there is some work around. Okay. And in the state, we're, like we're, this year, we had a, you know, um, they, they allowed um, you know some positions with no certification, sort of thing, or a different certification. State might come out next year too because they know. Who knows? We might hear something different. Could Bill speak? Right. Yeah. I, just yeah. I didn't know he was. I think we have so, so we're talking about the math coach position. That yeah, we can't fill, yeah. and then we're talking about tech ed positions. The, the tech ed position is a shortage. We've got kids signed up for classes. You got to put somebody in there, even if it's not. The best fit. The math math coach. You don't want to put somebody in there. Right. I don't. I'd rather have nobody right. and no. get somebody in there. Well, I wasn't saying just hire anybody. No, but, I was but hire still, but the we're math. looking yeah. for. We need to make some significant improvement, oh. and we need to have somebody who's dynamic, who's going to help our teachers succeed in bringing up. Our, putting somebody in there just because they pass the test and they. They're, you want someone who wants this job, and, who, I wasn't and, saying, and I would rather wait two years to get the right person than to have someone come in and get the ball rolling in the wrong direction, in my opinion. Yeah, I wasn't saying just hire anybody. I was saying, is there a way to get like a, yeah. a professor that, in math? Not that I would like want to do that in tech ed either, but person just not a math educator. A situation. You've got to kind of fill it with what you can. Yeah. So. Lee, did you want to get into the discussion? Yeah, yeah I had an initial similar reaction um, to what Bill just shared. And I'm wondering if we have anybody internally who is a highly successful math teacher that might be interested in moving into a role doing work supporting our math teachers. And then I imagine backfilling a math teacher seat, though incredibly challenging, that's when you can utilize some DSAP and mm -hmm you know, reciprocity for folks certified in other states um, to kind of fill the math teacher seat. But I imagine there's a lot of really talented people in our district already who might be interested in applying. Yeah, one of the yeah. best things the State Department did was they released where, like Jason, all the principals, the hiring managers, we all have access to the database from the State Department of every person certified in math in the state of Connecticut. Wow. Yes. So we can flat out send all of them, right? All yeah. 600 yeah. of them, an email yeah. going, We have an opening, this is great, you know, and see what you can get. Yeah, so there's sort of different methods that we use, and there are some internal conversations happening with those. But I mean, we can we heard loud and clear from you and from the board of finance you expect a math skill set mm -hmm. and math knowledge in order to advance our students, yeah. so we won't fall short on that. 
Right. It's just a way in which we get the right person. Right. Okay. We are very creative right. and exactly. solid. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm saying. I wasn't saying just hire anybody off the right. street yeah, yeah. as an actor. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying there are they don't avenues. have to be a teacher. They could be someone who is yeah. extremely yeah. awesome at math and knows how to do yeah. their skill set. Yeah. Yeah. To other people. Just to be clear, we're, all, we're only talking about the middle school. The elementary is <clears> okay. <throat> no, yeah, no, we're all no, set. Right. Just okay. I didn't know if yeah. everybody was aware. Yeah, so it's just the, the middle school work. We're working on so and i know the maternity leaves and everything and, and people that are changed and moving up for, for math but teacher because mr anderson's math teacher so i have to fill that yeah. um, <laughs> we need a long-term a couple of long-term subs in that yeah. but we <clears throat> you know we had a good candidate today in four more from or four more wednesday okay sorry. so we just have that 138 hours <laughs> we wish we can't have everything. <laughs> we'll get there. Right? Yeah. That would be awesome. That would be like for teachers. Yeah, right. I have a question though. What is the starting day for a math coach? It's a regular teacher. They follow the teacher's uh, contract. So, so if you were just out of school, uh, you would pay. You could make forty five thousand as a math coach. You would make step one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. So they follow the teacher contract. Yeah. So um, I think yeah, this, this is this this is not in the board doc. This is Which what's in, this is what's in the board doc. That's why I'm just I'm. Oh, is this is mine the old one? No, no, this is the new one. Where's no. the math? Uh, the math the math one isn't in there. Right. It's just so. an official. Yeah, it just says yeah. It was, right, because we had talked about. Bringing it to the board first to see what you guys wanted to yeah. do. Oh, I see. Okay. The, the, the conversation at FFO was so we okay. did two what should we do with that 87? Yeah. Okay. So All right. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I All right. Two, so, you know what? We were going, that's right. We were yeah. going off of two so different uh, so scenarios. So, the, so I'm sorry. I'm look, I, yeah. I have the wrong scenario sheet. Right. No, this is the right one. This is the wrong one. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, in terms of ultimately, ultimately, we want that's what we're looking yeah. at is, is okay. the math. Well, got it. Got it. Is, I think it's what was posted oh. is right. Correct. We need Correct. to make the decision. Right. Correct. That, Correct. That's right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. yeah. Correct. And so, should it be that? Okay. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Are we comfortable with the math yeah. coach piece? Right. So being the are, we, are we comfortable with the math coach I mean, being I the. I think we need to be clear. I yeah. Mean, Go ahead. I, I just want to make sure we're clear on what are we deciding. So we're deciding that. We are going to use for one of the math that one of the elementary school math coaches. We're going to use this. What I, I want to make sure we're, that we're going to use the um, ARP funds to cover one of the elementary uh, math coaches. We can do that for I guess up to two years, um, and then we can decide if we want to make it a full position going forward, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. We need to get into the operating budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that so would be the need part of, to do. Technically that's part of the operating budget so that we support get it into the operating that's budget. Right. That's right. And one of the reasons we also looked at the math coaches is that was what the Board of Finance also right. challenged for us on. Right. Yeah. So uh, we're going from one to three. Um, so it'll also give us time to evaluate is, do we need three? Because um, <laughs> maybe we don't. I don't know. I think most of us probably think we do. but. Yeah. Um, it gives us time. So I think that's the, what we're deciding is do we want to use the ARP funding for one of the elementary schools uh, math coaches and are we okay with that? Yeah, that very very well said. Okay. Is everybody good with that? Yep. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Barry. One other point on the budget stuff that will not apply here, but just to think down the road. It would be ideal if we could start thinking of budgets in terms of what outcomes are going to be attained. You know, our parents point that so we spend this money and we're going to do this. How are we going to know anything happened from this thing? What is going to be our outcome point? So I think down the road we should uh, start as much as we can and item and item or whatever to try to connect these budget expenditures to something that's going to happen as a result of the expenditure. Yep. Got it. Yeah. In terms of student learning. Yep. Yep. Okay. Good. Yep. Totally agree. Okay. So with that, then, so everybody's good with with the proposal as as Eric had articulated. So, okay. 
So we have to approve. We have to, we discuss yeah, we, yeah. yeah. The motion then would be this mm -hmm. plus to have the 87 oh, for okay. views. Oh, Let me take a shot. Go, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. There is a tentative motion in there. Yeah, I'm going to start with that and then, and then I'm going to add to it. Um, I think go so. Um, you got it. So I'd like to make a motion and recommend the approval of the Board of Ed by the Board of Education for the 2021-22 Board of Finance budget allocation amended to include a $87,000 reduction to be part of, to be used as the, to use the ARP funding right. to fund one elementary math coach and the other reductions as presented. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yep. Wasn't good, but it was. <laughs> it was, it was, it was <laughs> Would you like to second that, Jack? No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Jill, Jill, Jill second it. Jill, okay. Jill's, Jill's getting all the seconds. Okay. Good. Okay. So everybody, so everybody understands what we're doing? Yes. Okay. So everybody's all set to vote. Okay. So all those made the motion to signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody want to abstain? Passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, next item for discussion uh, the current budget deficit projection for 2021. This was another topic of FFO. Yeah. So, as we've reviewed at some of the other uh, meetings, uh, we just took a look at um, you know, where we were with uh, the deficit. It's still sitting around that same uh, mark of, you know, it's a little over 500,000 now, but Marianne has been tracking it closely. Um, and again, we discussed it at FFO, kind of where we're sitting right now. So you can see the, the bottom line is roughly uh, you know, the 513.675, and we're still allocating you know, ARP funds uh, to cover that, uh, that cost. So um, if there's any specific you know, questions that you, know, you might have on any of the items, but again, we, uh, we went through it at FFO and just wanted to make sure you all had a chance to see it as well. Any, any comments, questions on the budget deficit? Eric, anything to add? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, James got it. What's the plan? What's the budget? Plan? What's the plan? Do we have a plan? ARP yeah. funding is going to cover it's it. Covered. It's all covered. Thing? Yeah. 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 Is that what the, is, and it says at the bottom 294, is that what will be left over from nope. it? No, that 294 is just, um, I've already allocated. We got 294,735 in Corona relief funds. That was another grant that went to cover 100,000 toward PPE, which is reflected in that. So the 513 uh, is not a true deficit well, because it's being covered by CARES Act? Three, no, Fun. some of it is. So had we not gotten the 294, our deficit would have been 800 and something else. Okay, yeah. so after the Corona, it's 513? 513, correct. And then what are we doing with the 513? We're using AR 100 percent to cover yes. that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And we don't, and we're not going back to the town yeah. and asking for the five hundred thousand that we gave them last year. That's yeah. correct. On our budget, so we're not. No. And we're we don't have not, to. Yeah, they're just not getting a surplus back from us this year. They're not going. Yeah. No. Are no, they either. aware of that fact? Yeah. Oh yeah. And okay. we just I just want to make sure. Yeah. No, I, just, I just want to make yeah, sure yeah, yeah. that every year we give them back a little something. Yeah. I, I be, just don't want them to say, "Well, where's your surplus?" It will be anything this year. No. Yeah. Anything that's a good question. You, you, I think at every board of finance meeting, you let them know that yeah we're going to have that deficit. Yep. I know that the deficit is there. Just you never know. Good. Yep. Okay. We're all set to move on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our last, is this last? Yeah, last one. Last one. This is the uh, item for recovery, reimagining ad hoc committee meeting uh, and charter. Uh, so what you got in the in the packet is uh, a draft charter for this for this ad hoc committee that I put together um, to help facilitate the ad hoc committee <laughs> to get going. Uh, we had tremendous outpouring of people wanting to be on this committee, uh, which was great to see, which means, um, Eric, as you'll be chairing this committee, which means that um, the board as a whole is very, very interested in what you're going, what you're going to be doing. So, um, you know, transparency and feedback is going to be absolutely really critical. So 
But uh, against that, um, the membership for this committee um, will be Eric, will be the chair, uh, Barry, uh, very much, very much, well, I want you to be on it. And then uh, Lee and Candace uh, will be the other uh, members. So there'll be a committee of four. Jeff will be on it as well. Uh, and there'll probably be at least one or two other of your administrators. Yeah, yeah, I'll be, I'll be talking with the, uh, the administrators. You'll be figuring that out. See your ends here, yep. Um, I expect that um, board members, or maybe some board members that will want to sit in, and that that's A-OK, -okay as long as they don't, we don't exceed a quorum. Uh, you just have to designate who who is, <laughs> who is present and not. Um, and certainly, if it turns out that the committee responsibilities are become too much for any of the members that have been selected um, as time marches along and so forth. You know, raise your hand. There are other people that would would like to, very much like to be on the committee as well. So that's kind of kind of where it's at. I put the charter in the draft charter for everybody to take a look at it. If you have any comments, suggestions, pass them in to Jeff directly. Jeff will will work with Eric um, uh, on the charter. I think it's really important that the committee review the charter that I drafted. And if you guys want to rip it up and throw it away, you can do that, okay? Um, but I think that I think that some of the elements of what's in that charter that I drafted probably should should be some sort some sort of framework. But I think that um, you guys should do that. That's the first action item that you'll have. And before you do anything, you have to come back with your with your recommendations to that charter, okay, and present it to the full board. And the full board uh, has has an opportunity to review that and say yes, that's exactly what we would like this ad hoc committee to do, because um, this is a pretty important one, you know, to get to kind of make sure you're getting off on the right on the right board. So, what Jeff is there anything to add? No, I think. Uh, I think that that pretty much covers it. You know, we're going to be focused on the recovery aspect first, and then you know, as we get into the fall, um, we'll start thinking about the, mm -hmm. the reimagining component. Yep, and I yeah, I really think this is a going to be a very very important step to kind of as we come out of this out of the recovery phase to to get ready to to make the step toward wherever you're going to wherever we're going to be headed yep. uh, as a district. So I think this really it's an exciting time. And um, I'm sure that the full board is going to be, want to be very uh, engaged as well in all the steps that are taking. Yeah. Along yeah. The way. So, absolutely. Okay. Barry? Just during the process, Tim, as I went through yeah. this, there are some uh, questions I have in terms of what some of the phrasing and awards need. Is that best done like with a conversation between you and I rather than a full board? Meeting? Eric, Eric had suggested that maybe for the first first couple of meetings that you guys have that I would come and join you. Um, and if, and we could, and I could, you could do things like, what does this mean in Hagen language? And then I would, I would explain it and you'll say, oh, well, the better way to say this is this way. Okay. <laughs> or you guys can completely disagree too. So I mean, you know, that's, I'm, I'm open. So I, uh, if you want to talk okay. offline too. We okay, can and the other thing is that there's a list of questions here. Is our charge to answer all those questions or is there, I'm looking through here for what is the precise charge in phase one? Yeah, that's, that needs to be worked out. Yeah, it, it's, it, I wrote it so that, that I want to give the flexibility to the, to the ad hoc committee to, to, to say, to really get into it and say, this is what we should be doing. And then to present it back to the full board and say, this is, we've, we've had a robust conversation about this. This is how we should approach reimagining um, the direction for the, for the district. Okay. Just re rephrase that we are constrained, but not constrained by your charter document. Absolutely. Right. That's, that's it. Exactly. This it's it basically, I told Eric, I said, um, I will just sit down and do, do something. 
to help you guys get going. And then, and if it turns out that you want to take it and crumple it up and put it in the waste paper basket, <laughs> that's okay. So if I have some ideas on this, do I write it to Jeff? Do I write it to- Send it to me Jeff? and then I'll send it to Eric. Start, yeah. start thinking about it, but I don't even think, I don't think you should, I think you ought to wait until you have your first meeting. meeting yeah. And then you guys can, yeah. you guys will be able to yeah. figure out exactly how you're going to approach this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think we need to, probably get together in the next week or two and just this is a foundation or something to read and start yep. brain thinking and stuff but then kind of come together and start to frame out you know what is the charter what are we going to do yeah, so that's what I'll have. sound good sounds good. good okay all right so that that's it for discussion action items for the evening um move on administration reports yeah, real quick, a couple things. Um, elementary uh, class size. So we've been working with uh, our three elementary principals on uh, the numbers, and I uh, had mentioned um, is it an update or I sent you a, a, an email. We are going to need, you know, our two K teachers and our two grade two teachers, probably an additional teacher to keep our class sizes, you know, where we want them to be. If um, if we don't do that. Um, you know, uh, for instance, and these are averages, we're still, we'll, by the end of this week and the week update, I'll send you a kind of a, a spreadsheet of what we have, but these are projections. Um, we're still waiting for some, some more uh, families to solidify their attendance, but K would, um, if we do what we want to do right now, K would be averaging across three schools around 12, grade one around 13, uh, grade two around 15, grade three 17 to 18, and grade four 18 to 19. Those would be the average class sizes. Now, if you don't add the teachers in for the K, for instance, they're going to jump that up to 18 kids in a class. And that's beyond our, yeah. So because we, we're either going to have you know, two or three or four, you know, teachers in there. So really three or four. So, um, you know, I can kind of, if you want to see the scenario, you can do the math, you know, it's, yeah, you, you know what the math is. So um, that's right now what we're looking at. We've talked all along, we want those class sizes to be lower. So um, I'll send you a kind of a spreadsheet at the end of the week and a weekly update on that piece. Um, and then um, the only other piece I wanted to just make mention, we've got the safe return to in-person instruction and continuity of services plan. This is due to the state by the 23rd of June. Um, we have to put it out for our public to respond to. So we'll be doing that this week as well. And uh, an opportunity for the public in our community to provide some input on it. But it's pretty straightforward, reopening in full. Here's our mitigating measures, unless the state tells us, you know, we're gonna change or do something different. So. That's um that's pretty much uh that's it. Um again, kudos the high school's done a lot of work, all set for graduation and you know, and prom and uh you know, uh, we're we're ready to go next week is unbelievably the last week of school. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. So that's uh so that's that's it. This so, that I have perfect. I just have a question. Yeah. Can I have to ask? Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Has anything happened uh differently with prom or is it still status quo? No, we were allowing um, uh, undergrad students to attend now as, as guests or dates. So that's all set. I think that all, almost all or all of our virtual Viking students, seniors that have come back that are going to prom or- We have a bunch of come back that are going to prom. Even the special interest is going to be a little- That's great. That sounds fantastic. All right. It's a the good number. Second thing that I wanted to ask about is the senior parade. Is that going to happen? Yeah, Mark. Yeah, thank you for bringing, bringing that up because yeah. I was just going to mention on that. My list of things yeah. To talk about. Uh, so Mr. Nickerson <laughs> had reached out and said because uh, that you know he had come up with that last yeah, year and, and put it. it I I don't know if he promised, uh, but he yeah. what he said was that he's the, yeah. they're not they're not running it um, this year. Um, or he's not running that this year. That's not, has not been a high school thing or- No, I know, no, no. Or any, he was very vocal but, in promising the kids that this year they would get their parade. Yeah, and, and I, I believe there's some state ordinances that you, you have to get some approvals for, to run it on main roads of sort um, that are, you know, state roads. Uh, I don't know for sure. I heard that today. Actually, um, and that takes like a ninety day. Piece. Okay, so I don't you know. You just that, can't say hey. You just can't say yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I heard to today. Be, I don't know that to be exactly true, be, but yeah. I just heard that today okay. because the, yeah, this kind of came out of uh, okay. the, the, that it, it's not happening. No, but so. this date has been happening. 
what, the what state date, hasn't uh, moved, like graduation, the last day of school hasn't moved. No. So we've known about right. when, about the last time yeah. of school would be. Yeah. So yep. it's not like we changed the date so that you would know when a parade could happen. Yeah, no, we've not changed any of the any of the dates. So um, I, could, I don't know what conversations have no, been had um, or had not had been had, but we, we. I just know that lots of seniors and their families were looking forward to this okay. event yeah. because it was promised to them last year. Yeah. All right. We were not yeah. by us, by the town. Yeah. But on a happy note, I have to say, I mean, I, I think the kids are super excited. I mean, we are right at the home stretch. We have so much to be thankful for, and. We're going to have a great couple of weeks. We are. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Very much excited. That's it, Jeff. That's it. Okay. That's all. Amy, anything more to add other than summer school planning? Um, just our virtual weekends. We brought seven more kids back since the last time we met, mostly to the high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Naturally, for social reasons, I'm not sure. Um, but um, basically, our, our numbers are pretty much set. So just like I projected with my elementaries, I mean, this is their model. For the remainder of the year so I, yeah. I don't believe we're going to see much movement there and then um the only other piece for me is I've really been working with Jeff in regards to obviously my role and responsibility within the district reallocating looking at my roles and responsibilities deciding who some of them are being moved to or with Annalise coming on and looking at her position and making sure she I'm as organized as possible for that transition planning and, wow. and sort of working with her so I'm looking forward to that and then also just Shane, just to make a statement publicly, Shane didn't talk about the fact that he is the um, middle school standardized test coordinator and is phenomenal at it and really shined this year during the standardized testing, especially with the amount of remote learners. For middle school is the building that tests the most students because of those four grades. They do ELA, math, and science. Yep. And the remote testing and he really shined but i've known shane also on all of my curriculum puzzles and he's been on pd and evaluation as well so you've made an excellent choice for him as a colleague to jason and to jen so i'm very excited and i'm excited to work with annalise and meet her and transition and i feel good about the fact that my administrators are, are feeling as though this is the right move for us too as a district so no, supporting yeah. them so good. looking forward to some transition planning and sort of just making it as clean as possible good. Um, yeah. and doing that work so every day it gets harder and then a little bit easier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's going to be an interesting ride for the mm -hmm. next couple of weeks, but uh -huh. it's good. As long as these guys feel good, I feel good. Yeah, oh, that's great. So. That's wonderful. Yeah. Marianne, anything to add? No. 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 Nothing on your end. Your end, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. She keeps saying a lot. We don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> It looks as if we might be a board of finance Wednesday night. It looks like I think the the capital items went before it's like oh yeah finance. So I think uh, we we got to talk. Anna was out today. We're gonna talk to her tomorrow. Anna Johnson. Yeah. So I think we'll be there Wednesday night. Okay. All right, so, good too. Okay, committee reports. Uh, we had, did, there was an FFO committee, uh, and I think Eric, we covered it, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yeah, we There's covered everything. Lot, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll bring us to board comments and future agenda topics. Any comments from members? I uh, we'll see, I, Candace. I, Candace, okay. Well, I'd like to start, I'd, I'd like to encourage the board to create policy and or resolution in regard to the usage of party politics, lobbying, and the partnering, partnering with special interest groups. I would like to have more conversation uh, to ensure that the East Line Board of Ed, regardless of membership and or political affiliation, remains balanced and committed to children's education and not party politics. I feel like we are at a point where we need to have this discussion and put something in place. Um, I don't believe this can be left up to an individual member's choice anymore um, because of what I have seen uh, specific. I, I've identified the political foul and have called out it. Uh, since the beginning when I when I started here. And it was readily uh, used within those few years. And I think that 
by speaking to it, it minimized it. And I think that collaboratively people identify that that's just not good practice, right? It's not good. Um, and you don't get a good result from it. And over the past year and a half, I really seen some poor choices and poor behavior that has bothered me tremendously. And each time I do speak to it uh, and I point it out <laughs> and I, I always say, you know, this is not how we should navigate. And I think noting other districts and seeing the challenges that they have been having also. Um, I remember coming back from the Cape uh, Convention a couple of years ago, and I noted it, you know, that this is really a, a, a really large problem with municipalities. And because of the toxicity uh, with the political environment, I am concerned. So I feel like, you know, we are leaders here, and it's time to create a policy and put it in place. So I would like to do that. And get some feedback and see where we're working so, Yeah, okay. So you're, you're kind of suggesting that we put something together that would be an agenda topic for a future board meeting that would say, would, would allow us all to have a conversation around, around this. To, and then it might lead to a specific action for the policy subcommittee or whatever. I mean, that, well, I think that that's the process. That's I what, mean, yeah, that's that, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. I don't that really would, know what the problem yeah. I mean, the only other thing that I brought was the um, change to the bus policy and yeah. that kind of stuff. Okay. I wasn't too sure if okay. I had to make a motion, but I just, I think that this is super important and the, Clearly, because I'm saying it publicly. I yeah. mean, there have been other opportunities that I have said things just in anecdotal. This is a, a really, um, this is something that needs to happen, I believe. All right. Okay. I think I got it. Yeah, we can talk about it. Yeah. We'll the policy committee here. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Candace. Uh, let's see. Jane, did you get your hand up? I did. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, I hope everyone saw the miracle. Yes, that um, article is awesome. Great. Um, but I'm inviting all of you to come down to the Miracle Field on the 20th. It is our last day. Um, we are having the Miracle League of Hartford come down. Oh, wow. um, and hey. from 10 to 1, we are doing a showcase showdown kind of deal between the two the Hartford field and our field. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a food truck and it's going to be a big like party and a celebration and a big thank you to volunteers. I know Jeff, your daughter is down there every weekend. Candace, your daughter is down there every weekend. Mm -hmm. um, the baseball team's there every weekend. Mm -hmm. It is, we have people from Norwich who come down to volunteer. Yeah. We have volunteers from all over the state. Mm -hmm. We have players from all over the state come. It is amazing. It's awesome. And I hope that some of you can come down and see it. Um, watching these kids play, the parents watching their kids play. Um, it's awesome. So the 20th from 10 to 1. Come down, come watch these kids with their families. You will be. It is yeah. Father's Day. Yes. Yeah. Uh, On Mother's Day, we were there. All the yeah. moms got <laughs> car, all the moms got carnations yeah. from their players. <laughs> it sweet. was it was awesome. So come down. There's gonna be a food truck. Hopefully, it won't be as hot as this weekend. Yeah. We are having a raffle. If anybody wants a ticket to win a Toyota Supra, I am selling raffle tickets. The oh, wow. proceeds support Toyota Toyota Main Super. Street, oh. the Children's Museum, and the Miracle League. Wow. How Very much are the tickets? They are $100 a piece. We are only selling $2,000. So. Okay. Good. But that's Good. What Did I got Thanks, the Jane. They are selling us the car at cost. Wow. And that's from uh, Anton uh, Antonino. Nice. And that's the that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. very good. Very good. Anybody else? Yeah. Like us? John? Real quick, um, details are coming out about this. I'm not sure how much, Jeff, you've heard about it, but uh, the Daigle Foundation on East Lime Day, since we're not doing an East Lime Day, it's doing an evening to remember, oh, uh, yeah. recognizing all the folks that we lost during COVID uh, down on Main Street. So that. Uh, oh, so that is July 17th. Um, so Put that in, but that's there'll be more cool. details. Like that. Good, that's excellent. Yeah, that's wonderful. Wonderful. Anything else? Hey, Eric? I said most of my comments on social media, but I, I'd like to make a little more pointed is that I do think 
we need to really more aggressively look and, and there's there are students that are in our high school right now who can do this very well and they can hold they can come they don't have to post it i mean most most um famous people whatever they don't write their own i mean mm -hmm. John's probably writing posts for people as well. So I don't write it. So we, we do need to approve it. They don't need, you know, right? We can't let them just post for us, but they'll be much better in coming up with some ideas and thoughts. And it is, um, it's critical where now, where we, you know, we're the day and age we're in. And, um, you know, I, Deb has done a nice job, I think, with the Eastline High School Twitter feed. I don't know if I, but I do, that so we see a lot of positive things come out. But when those, when I see it from other schools, I typically don't get it because I don't follow those other schools, mm -hmm. but someone else is retweeting it that's getting yeah. into my feed. Sure. And I don't know if we're great at getting them retweeted, um, but I do like to see what happens at other schools. And yeah. most of it, I get littered with all the athletic stuff, but I like seeing that anyway. But I think there's more we can do and we can, piggyback with that we have students who this would be a great experience for them so that's that's what i'd like to see more of we have to get better at this marketing thing uh and i think that's at least one thing we can sort of okay good great anybody else okay all right so with that uh we will take a brief recess and we're going to have then we're going to go into executive session for the purpose of a proposed employment contract with superintendent uh for next year send everybody home yes uh, it was nice seeing everybody yeah. Yeah. Nice meeting back.